I think Modern Warfare 2 is unfinished. Despite all of its polish, it is definitely unfinished in my opinion because it's missing some core features that Call of Duty pretty much always has and other ones that have been introduced to the series over time. And a lot of times when you're building a new game, you should continue to build on those things, not completely remove them and try and add them later on as DLC because I think that's what they're going to try to do. And we're going to focus on three aspects. Features, there's bugs and crashes, and then the overall UI, they've made some adjustments, but it still sucks. In general, the features when it comes to things missing, the combat record is one that you immediately notice. You don't, you can't track your stats, can't track your playtime, can't track any of those things. And normally within that tab, there's a challenges section. Obviously, we got our daily and weekly challenges, but normally within every Call of Duty, there's some kind of challenges that you're able to do lifetime where you can do the boot camp challenges, I would call them, or the killer challenges, or the retaliate. They had different names for them, but essentially you would get challenges that would lead to calling cards, and you could rep a specific calling card in game. Whether you got a nuke or something like that, it would be an animated nuke calling card. Those are completely missing. And what's unfortunate is I don't know if those things are even tracking because let's say you got a nuke and that's an incredibly hard thing to do, just as an example, and it doesn't track because you don't get a pop of saying, hey, you got a nuke, then when it actually gets added, then you're gonna be kind of screwed. That happened back in World War II. They added a calling card for that later on and you didn't get progress for that. You had to get a nuke again. So hopefully the stats that we're getting are actually tracking because it'd be unfortunate if they were not. Uh, leaderboards, on top of that, there's a lot of people that like to look at the leaderboards to see where they stack up against other players. This is more of a smaller niche part of the community, but in general, you want to kind of see how other people are doing, especially if you're a super grinder and you're in the top 1,000 or something like that, or 10,000, and you kind of want to see where you stack up against your friends. Those are kind of one of those things that's been there for a long time. I know split screen wasn't available right away. I'm not sure exactly at the time of me recording if it's been fixed, but that's kind of been a standard feature that's been there for a long time. I don't know if consoles can necessarily hold up to that. Maybe on the newest gen, but not on the old gen. I don't think a PS4 can handle that. So we'll kind of see if that that's kind of the issue there. On top of that, you're not able to save a blueprints. This is kind of very important, especially when it comes to this game, where you're not able to go in there and save the attack the way they are with the specific tuning it is going to be impossible to remember the name of the attachments the specific tuning modifications and whatever the case is with 50 or so weapons in the game it's just not going to be easy and this is a feature that is a must-have didn't really matter back in older call of duties when you'd have like three attachments on a gun or one or two attachments on a gun with an optic cool easy to remember you just put on an under barrel extended mag you're good with this there's like a hundred attachments for one gun once you've gone through and leveled everything up it's kind of insane to see how many under barrels there are there's like 20 of those and it doesn't even tell you that in the ui that's just another side thing that we'll get to but it doesn't even tell you that in the game so you know exactly how many there are in that category you just have to kind of assume versus the list form that they had in modern warfare which was significantly better but that's a that's an aside when you are getting kills within game there's no little pop-up that says what kill streak you're on i know it's up at the top right it says a 5, a 10, a 15, a 20, or whatever, and beyond that, but it really was nice getting used to it where it was in the bottom, and we kind of had that in multiple CODs, and one of the most egregious things that is missing, this is by far the absolute worst things that is missing is the hardcore playlist. Obviously, they've renamed it to tier one. I've never been a big fan of that mode besides doing a couple challenges here and there for camos or whatever, but there's a huge audience for that where they just kind of just said, screw you. And I know there's a lot of people comment saying, hey, well, the TTK is fast enough. Well, that's not what it's about. It's about having no HUD elements, missing a lot of stuff, and the TTK being lower because you only have 30 health. So most of the time you die in one or two bullets with pretty much almost anything thing in the appropriate ranges and that is completely missing and that is unfortunate that's like unforgivable in, in my opinion to release a mode people buy it and they only play hardcore they don't have the mode to play you can't make that up especially when it's just a flip of a switch to change those settings so i don't that's kind of one i'm frustrated for those people but you know it is kind of what it is at this point right getting into the next section which is bugs and crashes there's a lot of bugs and crashes 
but one of the bigger bugs that's important right now is when people are trying to level they want to activate these double xp tokens they've gotten from the special edition the beta and all the different promotions going on they've entered them in they activate it and they don't even know how long it's active for they obviously carried it over where it starts the second you activate it and the timer just goes for 30 minutes an hour 45 minutes whatever the the quantity is but you have nowhere to check that so once you click it you have to have a set of timer for yourself which this is a, another missing element that 100 should be there and should be visible the next thing is when you go to a specific weapon you can't even see when you unlock a specific attachment slot in the beta or whatever i think it showed which one depending on which slot whether it was the muzzle or the magazine slot or the optic it would say what level level you needed to get the gun this does not show that and it's like okay how long do i gotta use this before i gotta move off of this 30 round mag that's just not enough for a low damage weapon it's kind of one of those things is how am i supposed to know playing the game for the first time what i am locking I, obviously i'm leveling it up so i'll get there eventually but that's not really the point it's like you should know specifically when i'm gonna get access to a muzzle when i'm gonna get access to a stock it just makes no sense on top of that, there are a lot of attachments. When you do click on the attachment slot, you'll go through them and it'll tell you specifically, hey, if you wanna get this specific optic, you gotta go jump over and use a shotgun for this laser or whatever. It'll tell you kind of how to unlock it. But there's several that are just listed and there's no information on it. It's just listed there and it's like, okay, is this a DLC attachment? What's going on? Do I need to buy a blueprint? How does this work? And it's not explained anywhere. How, how do you let that make it to the game where people are just completely confused on how this attachment is supposed to work tuning tuning was added and it was completely broken obviously it didn't do very much but the, the the dead zones on the sliders were insane i would barely touch it my controller doesn't have any stick drift and then automatically it would swing up always to the top i was like all right what's going on my character's not moving the sensitivity on it's busted it was so busted that it was crashing the game so they had to remove it as a feature and they're going to add it back later on once they get it figured out so basically the, the this cool feature I, which I don't even think is necessary. They had to backtrack and remove it. On top of that, they removed pinging. Pinging's a cool little feature, especially once you get to the platinum challenges for rifles. There's long shots. You gotta get 25 long shots with those weapons. It's nice to be able to ping that specific distance. So whether that's 40 meters, 32 meters, you wanna know exactly where a long shot is. So you're not trying to challenge people at 60 meters. And that is a big thing, especially if you wanna maybe ping someone, hey, there's a sniper right there. Let me ping them for my teammate. And then they'll have a little bit of an idea of where those people are that makes a huge difference in my opinion and they had to remove that because if you happen to die while pinging it would leave the live ping permanent so you could track people through walls and people would think people are cheating and a lot of people get shadow banned because people will get reported it's just a nonsense after nonsense when you create the issue it shouldn't be there right another one is it specifically for keyboard and mouse if you want to go ahead and check your camos it's bugged you have to use your arrow keys and some keyboards don't even have the arrow keys properly if your keyboard's small enough so you have to actually use the arrow keys or have a controller plugged in so you could tab over and see what the challenges are for gold platinum and kind of see how those things work even though the system is much simpler and easier to use the fact that you can't even use it properly unless you know exactly but how would you know that unless you were told, right? Uh, another one that I think a lot of people are like, hey, where's my M13 or whatever like that. When we had the beta and you were able to glitch into the loadout section, you could see the different weapons. There was 54 weapons available in that and they were missing the Strela. Compared to the list that we currently have within the game, uh, which that would bring the weapons up to 55. The game has dropped with 51. I've subtracted those from it. And that ends up being four weapons that were removed. The, the weapons they did remove from that, I think they're gonna be DLC weapons for season one normally we get two and then in the mid-season update we maybe we get another weapon there was a total of four weapons so i think three of those are m13 based and then there was like a sniper rifle in there as well so maybe that's the combination they're going for they're going to give us one m13 which will unlock three weapons and then we'll get a sniper rifle so hopefully that's kind of what that is for and they, those get added because they were clearly in the beta version of the game and lastly the ui is still horrific are they they i know it's too late to switch and we're kind of stuck with this the unfortunate part is we're gonna have to deal with this menus for two years and they're not really gonna change it because this call of duty headquarters hub is gonna integrate the next Treyarch game in two years or whatever they do next year at the end of the day we're kind of stuck with these crappy menus that are horrific in almost every way 
non-responsive, non-intuitive, non-whatever. They're just the worst menus we've almost ever had in COD. BO4 had kind of a bad menu too, but it was still significantly better than what we have in this, where it's just all like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. It's like the list format is significantly and infinitely better. Hopefully they do something about that. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.